G'day folks, welcome back to the channel and the sizzling summer of Sony, which is just about at an end now. I was waiting for a long time to do this video because there's really not much left to do on this unit, the TC270 you see in front of you, but uh, unfortunately my plans didn't work out, so uh, yeah, this will be however long it is, I guess. I was going to combine this with my uh, Sony STR-DB840. I finally figured out what was wrong with that thing. It's the input switching I see, but uh, I ordered the new part and it never showed up. So uh, yeah, that's not going to be part of this video anymore. And it's probably never going to get done now because uh, I just don't care enough about that old receiver to, uh, to make any further special attempts at trying to get a new IC for that thing. But yeah, somebody commented on one of the older videos of that receiver and said that uh, usually when they get like that, it's because the input switching IC fails, and the way to test for that is to use the optical inputs and see if it passes audio that way. Well, mine does pass audio that way. So, uh, yeah, that's the problem on that machine is uh, needs a new input switching IC. But if I can't get these uh, Chinese companies to send me one, then there's nothing I can do. Anyhow, we're going to deal with this guy today, finally. This will technically be part three in my series on this machine. First couple of parts dealing with recapping and uh, relubricating everything in here. And it should still be working properly, but uh, we'll find that out in a second. But uh, first, I'm excited to inform you that I actually found my decent tape for this thing. I only had one brand new tape I bought for this, and uh, I bought it at the same time actually as I bought this uh, this reel here from Radio Shack back in the day. So uh, if I can get this going today without doing its little humming trick, then uh, maybe we'll use this and do a record and play test because uh, there's really not much else to do here except fix the problem and see if it works. So. Uh, how about we turn this on and see if it's still doing that humming noise. I've got the home theater turned on right now and I've got audio connected, so let's find out. And yes. Immediate loud hum, followed by softer hum. Some static in these controls, so I guess I gotta clean those again. That's no big deal, but uh, yeah. In the last video, I think, we found out that the cause of the hum was a bad transistor, and not the fact that this whole machine here does not know the words to the song. So uh, yeah, I've got replacements for the transistor. I hope they work. I don't know for sure, but uh, we'll talk about that in a second here. Let's see if it still plays. Sure does. Fast forward. Pause. Yeah, no problems there. Okay, so here's the relevant part of the schematics here. I'm not exactly sure anymore which transistor it is. It's been a while. It's one of these two in the power amplifier stage of the, one of the channels. It sounds like the right channel. I thought it was the left channel, but I could be wrong. I think I might have switched the transistors around just to test them. But anyhow, it's one of these, and uh, you got to measure between base and uh, emitter for 0 0.55 volts, and if you don't get that voltage, it's, it's faulty. So, the transistors in question are 2SC632As. And uh, let's see here. Q104 is a 2SC634A, along with these two over here. And the transistors I got are supposedly able to replace either one of these, so I don't know exactly for sure what's going to happen when I do this, but uh, this is the replacement I've got, a KSC1815. It should work. We're going to have to pay attention to emitter, collector, and base to see whether or not the uh, new transistor matches up with the old one. Sometimes they're backwards. They can be base collector emitter instead of this way, but uh, 
I think the one this is replacing is exactly the same, so we should be able to just slot it in there. And uh, I've got a bunch of them here, so uh, yeah, I ordered 10 of them because might as well while you're doing something from, from DigiKey, right? But uh, yeah, I've got a, another printout here of the uh, actual circuit board inside the unit so I can figure out which is the base and which is the other two pins and collector and emitter and all that sort of stuff, but uh, shouldn't be too hard. It looks like it's fairly straightforward. Base, collector, and emitter all in a row like that, so should be no problem. And I want to introduce you to the tool I will be using to do measurements. Yes, I bought one of these things. Couldn't help myself. I saw 12 volt vids do one too many videos on this thing and I decided I had to have one. Now, what we're gonna have to do to get inside this is we can leave this front cover on it this time. We're just dealing with the electronics this time. So what we gotta do is we gotta take off both the screws from the top here. And then we gotta go around back. If I can move this around. And let's see here. This comes out, this comes out, this comes out, this comes out. And yeah, I think that's probably gonna be it. So let's get these screws out. Okay, so this thing is out of the cabinet and we can get to uh, checking some voltages here just to find the problem transmitter. So, this meter is going to be a little hard to read because of the uh, the brightness of my lights and the fact that uh, these guys apparently don't find it necessary to include stands with their meters, but uh, whatever. All right, we'll go to uh, DC volts and power on. And let's see here. Which way is up? I think this is actually the right way up for uh, what I'm dealing with here. So, uh, of course things can't cooperate. Why would they cooperate? Okay, so we're looking for 0 0.55 volts between base and emitter. If I'm remembering things right. Okay, there's Q106. That's right there. That might actually be the one. Okay. And then the other one's on the bottom here. Am I testing the right pins again? Let me see. Base, cathode, emitter. Or collector emitter. I always get that confused somehow. Let me see. Q105. Where's that? It's the one directly down from that. Okay, I have made progress here. I think it is, uh, what is this now? Q203, that's failed. It's something we haven't checked yet in this video so far. It has nothing to do with any of the four parts I desoldered for testing earlier. So Q203 is 2SC632A, so I should have the replacement for that. So, I'm gonna show you how I or uh, why I think it's the problem. So, see if I can get you in here. See a little better. Can't zoom you in too far. Okay, so the transistor in question is right down here next to this big grommet. Now, let's see here. If I can orient myself, the emitter is here. And there's nothing there. Now the collector is right next to it. That's where our hum is. And next to that is the base. And listen to what happens when I touch the probe to that 
pin. Noise. Now this doesn't mean that this transistor is bad, but I will uh, go up to the one on the left channel and I'll touch the probe to that same pin. Nothing. Nothing whatsoever. And yet when I touch it to the same pin down on the right channel, we get noise. And just for giggles, I'm going to go to uh, the collector of the left channel and there's nothing there. So, the noise is at the collector of Q203. And uh, on the schematics, that corresponds to, let's see if I can get my camera gimbal to cooperate here. Okay, so let me reorient myself here. That's this here. So the collector is right here. Right where C, or no, not C, R228 connects and the other transistor, Q204. So it could be something with Q204 as well. I'm going to check the voltages here, I think. That is something we will do next, I think. And I'm going to use the X-Check meter because it's easier to see on camera than the, uh, than the other do jangler is. Disconnect the scope here for a second. And yes, I know the scope can do all this too, but uh, I prefer to just, yeah, go with what we've got here. It's just easier to, to just grab a different meter, I guess. Okay, let me ground this. I got a little uh, alligator clip here to connect this to on a jumper wire and then we'll just check these voltages here and we'll see what happens. Okay. Two volts there and on the on the left channel. Two volts there. What about the collector? Four volts on the left channel. About four volts on the right channel. Now we got 1.5 on the emitter. And 1.5 on the emitter. So I'm thinking Q203 is good. Doesn't mean Q204 isn't good. Let's see, where is 204? Yeah, the ones I was testing before are Q205 and Q206, so uh, Q204 is our next suspect, and I'm trying to figure out where it is now. Bear with me. I think it's over here. Okay. Doesn't say anything about the base there, but emitter. 3.82. Should be 4.8. But it's the same on the left channel, so I'm inclined to think that's not the problem. So, collector should get 21 volts. Seventeen and... Seventeen, so... That looks good. Hearing noise in the audio now, 4.42 on the bass. Ah, it's still the same. This is tricky, this one. So I think I have to remove Q203 and 204 to, to test those. There is a trap down here though that I'm concerned about. Could the audio, or could the hum be getting in there? That's a good question. 
Is L201 even working? I don't even know. I don't even know how to test that, that kind of thing. But we do know voltages seem to be okay, so uh, we'll go back to the scope here. And hope we can actually find something. All right. Let's see here. Let's see, 218, where is that? Nope, no noise there. So that's not where it's coming in. Well, no, of course that's not where it's coming in because uh, the emitter of Q203 does not have the noise on it. So of course it's not going to be there. So the noise has to be coming in from... Huh. Oh, that's right. I traced this down to the collector before. So we got to check to see if there's 10 volts at C219 now. Should be able to do that with the scope, though. So where's 219? Good question. It's above Q204. And I remind you that this has been replaced. There's a little something there. About the same something that was there on the left channel. So what is going on with this? I don't know about just yanking these transistors to see if the noise is still there. But I might have to do that. And I'm just kind of following through the uh, schematics here just to try to figure out what's going on. So yeah, where the noise is getting in is right here. R228, right there. So we need one side of C219. We need to uh, measure that voltage because we couldn't get anything on the scope there. So let's try and do that. Five volts, that should be 10 volts. Oh, it's 20 volts on the left channel. What in the world is going on with this? Am I checking the wrong capacitor? Ah, this is getting frustrating. Let me tell you what. Oh, okay, there we go. Probably was checking the wrong capacitor. Yes, I was. So we've got 8 volts where we should get 10 volts. Okay, that voltage is fine. Well, folks, I finally found the problem. Took literally hours to find this, but... Uh... I'll show you what I found here. I found one real big clue on this side of the uh, whole assembly here. Check out these output devices. You see how crusty they look? Well, that's a clue. The ones we're looking at for the right channel are on this side of the heat sink. And I wanted to show you exactly what I found when I tested those. So we're gonna test them on camera together. Or we're gonna to try to. I don't know if you can see anything, but uh, I'm gonna to try to get my probes in there. And we're just gonna check the bottom one. This one's got 0 0.191 here. And then when I go up to the next pin, look at that, 0 0.001 shorted. I can swap the leads around. Yeah, same deal. That transistor is popped. So, we'll check the next one up. 
same way. We got OL there. Let me switch the leads around. Okay, we get 0 0.470 volts on there. And let's compare it to the suspected bad one again, 0 0.190. And uh, the top one gives us negative 0.747. It's not measuring dead shorted like that one is. And we'll just check the other channel, the left channel, the one that works. These are all oriented. Well, they're not oriented the same way, are they? So I gotta switch my hands around. Okay, we'll check this one. 0 0.450 and 0.486. Check the bottom one here. Point four four five and point four eight two. So the problem is we've got one blown output transistor, and I do not have replacements for those. So I'll show you where they are in the schematic. They are these two right here. So one of these is fried. One of these is potentially good, but I have to find replacements for the bad one now, and I have to re also replace the emitter resistor, which is one ohm, half watt. So, uh, yeah, we're still not at the end of it on this uh, big old open reel deck, but we're, at least we're getting closer. As I suspected all along, the issue was trickling down from the uh, bad power amp section there. It was the hum was making its way all the way back through the uh, the whole thing, if you were. But the good news is, with that transistor being bad as it is, the issue has nothing to do with the uh, recording stages. So anything that was ever recorded on this machine should be hum-free once we get this problem sorted. But I have to find replacements for those transistors first. Might as well get a couple of them. You saw how crusty they were. Clearly somebody or some moisture got in there at some point and fried it, so... Yeah, if I had hair before I started this, I would, would have pulled it all out by now, but at least we know where the problem is. All right, folks, so here's the deal with this old beast. I had a look online trying to find replacements for those two SD291s in there on the uh, power amplifier side of things, and, uh, well, the news isn't good. I cannot find those for any kind of a reasonable price. They are unobtainium. Pretty much. You have to pretty much go on eBay and pay parts scalper prices to find those things. And uh, the long and short of it is it looks like I'm spending at least 30 bucks to get that one transistor replaced. More if I want to do both transistors on that channel. I tried looking for alternates and they're expensive too. Also unobtainium. So I have to figure out whether or not this is really going to be worth it to continue trying to put any money into this. It's been recapped, yes, but uh, honestly, this is kind of a low-end tape deck anyway, so I'm not sure if I want to go any further with this machine. And I should probably talk a little bit about how I got to this uh, point of suspecting those transistors. And basically, what I did was I came down here and I isolated this entire section from everything else. And then I went looking for the uh, ripple back here just to see if it changed any, and it did. It was still there, but it, much less uh, amplitude. So uh, that led me to thinking, well, what if it's the uh, power amplifier itself? And uh, sure enough, the one was bad. We've got a base to emitter short, I believe, on one of them. So yeah basically took me two hours of uh, driving myself up the wall trying to figure out what in this stage might be causing the problem when in fact it was up here all along. So yeah, like I said, I've got to figure out whether or not it's going to be worth it to do this on this machine anymore considering the speakers are not original anymore. It's never had all of the screws up here and uh, yeah, you're probably wondering 
why there's a hum in the line outputs and not anywhere else or whatnot or or why there would be a, a hum in the line outs when it's uh, basically the speaker outputs that are doing that and well basically the the whole problem with this machine is the line outs and the speaker outs are driven from the same transistors so that that's where the noise is coming from I've never used this to power speakers with so uh, yeah that's basically how I didn't realize it was uh, one of these two transistors all along so yeah like I said guys I'm really not very good with diagnosing amplifier issues and this is clearly an amplifier issue so yeah the good news is once I replace that transistor this will probably work again the bad news is replacing that transistor is expensive so that's where we are with this unit. There may be a part for, don't hold your breath on that. I'm really strongly considering cutting this thing loose and sending it off to the recyclers and finding a better open reel machine that I would really rather prefer having because uh, this has never worked. Not one single time since I bought it in 1987 has it ever worked. That transistor has been blowed up this whole time. And it's kind of remarkable, actually, that I was able to get audio out of it in, in its current state for all these years. But, uh, yeah, that's where we are. That's where it is. And, yeah, I'll see you in the next video. Take care.